Yo, yeah, bye. Welcome back to episode four of Cultureverse. Uh, we have many topics today. Oh, I'm your host, Matia, with my co-host, Caden. Hey. Uh, we have many topics today, so we're just going to hop right in it. So first topic, we have Stranger Things animated series in the work. Take it away. So basically, Stranger Things, as we all know, is a very successful Netflix show that came out a while ago, actually. Um, season four finished up last year, and season five, I'm assuming, should be coming this year. We got an announcement that there was going to be some spinoffs. I know that some of the actors and actresses have discussed in like t live shows that there will be spinoffs. But this is one that they uh, that the producers announced, and it's an animated one. Basically, what they said in their quote is that at the end of it, they said that the story continues, like it'll live on. So I'm assuming that it will carry on after the events of season five, because I'm pretty sure season five is the last season of Stranger Things. So I would be very interested to see how they do that. I'd be interested to see how the animation style will go, because obviously there's a bunch of animation styles that they can do. So I'm really interested to see what in specific they're going to do, because hopefully I I'm hoping it looks good. I hope it looks very good. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I hope it looks good. And uh, I am interested in what type of anime style. What I think would really be dope if they kind of like an 80s anime style. With mm, it. Since, you mm -hmm. know, after season five. Because isn't season five or season four in the 80s? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so if they went with like an 80s vibe for it in the anime style, I think that obviously really set the mood. And it'd be really cool yeah, to watch, cool. especially seeing all the characters animated, yeah. which would be really interesting, especially if we can get all the actors who play those characters to voice their characters again. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, obviously, people are going to watch it and make a killing for Netflix. Yeah. So it's a good idea. Uh, me, personally, I've never been, like, the biggest Stranger Things guy. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a really good show. Oh, I yeah. do enjoy watching it. But you know how, like, when it comes out, people are, like, obsessing over it. You see TikToks, Instagram mm -hmm, posts on it. Mm -hmm. People will binge watch it in one day. I, I take my time with that show. I'm not going to lie. I, for season four, the one that just came out, yeah. just for the first, like, part alone, I think it took me like a month to finish. Like I watched like oh, maybe wow. like an episode, like maybe two episodes a week because I watched the show with my dad and my yeah. mom because uh, they liked it. You know, I kind of had to work around like their schedule so you know, them being old. <laughs> 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 so we knock out like two episodes per week. And uh, like I said, I like it. It's not something I'm crazy about. But if there's an animated series, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch it. Yeah. I, for for me, I, I, I do like the show a lot. Uh, season one... I think it was a very, very strong start. Yeah. A very strong start, actually. I Because I, I was one of those people that binged the whole thing in a, in a day. It, season one was a strong start. Season two was... It was all right. I think season three is my favorite. When the Russians started getting more yeah, involved. Yeah, that's my favorite. Remember, I like season four, too. Season four is good. Season one came right out the gate because... It was kind of... It had that kid show's vibe to it. Yeah. But also had that horde, yeah. dark, like killer vibe to it because you didn't really know what was going on like where is will trapped and yeah. what is going on and why does this exist and then you have the whole lab sequence too and uh yeah it, it, like i said strong start season two the only part from season two i remember is, is bob dying that's it oh yeah by the demo uh the demo dogs yeah yeah by the demo, which i was saying i, I like bob but i did uh, too he was yeah, you know he was, he was cool chill. he so was uh he was the guy from Lord of the Rings, he played Samwise, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He played Sam. Yeah, yeah Samwise, yeah. And uh, I was stabbing when he was dead, but that's literally the only season, I mean, the only scene from season two that I can actually specifically remember. Mm -hmm. And then season three was just great when... Uh, so good. Yeah, when so they had, like, the Russians, not the Russians, but, like, the Russian worker, how they're, they're taking yeah. it all across the country and everything. Yeah. Or, like, the county. I thought that was a cool little arc. Uh, season four was good. I liked the whole arc in Russia, how Hopper was still in Russia, and how, like, you know, Joyce and then Murray, I think his name was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how they went to go get him, and then the kids were doing their own thing. Like, uh, what was Mike doing? Mike actually went to go visit Elle when, since mm -hmm. she and the buyers moved away. Yep. So they kind of had that arc, that arc going, and then, you know, Steve and Dutch were doing, Dutch, uh, Steve and what was the name? Someone with the D. Oh. Ah. Uh, I totally forgot. The kid with the teeth. <laughs> that's the only thing I can remember right now. Uh, Dustin. Dustin. Yeah. Dustin. Yeah. Uh, I, duo, I just looked, I just looked at the topic, too, and I said Dutch. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, Dustin. Steve and Dustin were doing their own thing. 
Don't, that's my favorite duo on the entire show. I oh, love, yeah, I love the Steve and Dustin scenes, but yeah. But uh, I, no, I'm, I am excited for the animated series. Like I said, it's not something I'm crazy about, not something I can't wait for, but I am interested. Yeah, I am too, and I... I still think season three is the best season, in my opinion. Yeah. Season four was good. You know, Eddie was a good character. Um, see, but season three was just, it was it was great. I, I loved I loved everything about it. I loved the vibe that it carried. I loved the characters that were introduced, and the plot was just great for that season. I, I really do like that season a lot. I, I appreciate it for what it was, and you know, season four was good. It was enjoyable. I I, I do think I took my time with part two. Of that actually, it's fine. Part two, I actually knocked out in like in two days. Really? Because it was literally like mini movies. Yeah, like hour and a half episodes. Yeah. Which was obviously crazy, but uh, there's nothing. Oh yeah, I saw this theory that Eddie could actually still be alive according yeah. to like the Dungeons and Dragons lore, since Vecna has like a right hand man. Yeah, yeah. And how like that right hand man can get uh, reincarnated, and people are saying that might be Eddie. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't want to come back. I'm sorry. Let him die. That's what I'm saying. I just, let him just, go. Just let it, like, I, because, you know, I don't typically like when they do those things, you yeah. know, because, like, his his death was, it was a sacrifice, and I think it was very, the music for it, separate ways, it was, it was great. Yeah. And the whole moment was great. I feel like if they bring him back or reincarnate him, and then, like, they realize it's him, like, I, I don't know, I, I feel like I'll feel some type of way about yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, come on, bro. Like, it kind of takes yeah. away from... The, the whole stranger things like effect because that's not really yeah. stranger that's predictable yeah you know that's you know. the whole thing about stranger things. it's a very unpredictable show yeah I agree. like you just don't know where it's gonna go next which is which is one of the main reasons why i love it yeah but uh if they brought him back like i said it's predictable and not something i'm gonna be crazy about at all i agree yeah i agree but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very i'm interested in this animated series Hopefully they, I, I do like that idea of like the 80s animation vibe. That's actually very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, moving on to like a little subtopic, Jack Black, apparently, apparently he played Red Dead Redemption. And I'm assuming, I think it's the second one in specific. He says that he wants a movie for it, which I think would be amazing. Oh, yeah. I, and I think now is the time to execute that because they're doing a lot of, Shows or movies that are based off video games. Yeah, because they can hop like around that Last of Us peak. Like yeah, this, yeah. You know, with that show throughout the episodes, it kept on getting more and more mm -hmm. viewership. So if they did that, you know, with the Red Dead Redemption movie, it's, people would watch it. People I would watch, watch it. it. Especially instead of not like, I wouldn't say release it in theaters, but you know, put it like on a streaming service mm -hmm. and people are definitely going to watch it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, because with Last of Us. We have God of War coming, Mario, all these are uh, very big things. Yeah. So if they're heading, if they if they do do a Red Dead movie, uh, actually they they can make it into a movie or a show. I think I would probably want it to be more a movie so they can do like the first one with Arthur Morgan, which is because te technically Red Dead Two is a yeah, Red Dead Two is a prequel to Red Dead One because Red exactly. Dead Two is eighteen ninety nine and then nineteen oh six. Yep. And then Red Dead Redemption One is nineteen twelve, I think, or nineteen eleven. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that has a lot of potential, especially casting. Because yeah. I have like my own like little dream cast in my mind. Mm -hmm. So if they could, you know, obviously get good casting for it, it it would be amazing. I agree. Yeah. Because the story for Red Dead, I think, is a very beautiful story a yeah. very beautiful story and the end of it i was left in awe yeah especially because uh, i know i said this before but a game about gunslingers and outlaws you would not expect it to have such an emotional toll on you yeah. as it did because once chapter six hit everything was kind of like coming towards an end you could yeah. feel it dutch was starting to lose his mind arthur was sick mm -hmm. john was betrayed michael was you know being michael was being you know michael was being micah you could felt the whole thing and you no know, characters were sadly dying off yeah and the thing was just not there anymore even though they were trying to hold it together yeah. and you can just feel that tension growing knowing that at one point it's gonna happen like in chapter six that one mission i think it was the last mission when you go back to confront micah and then, you no, know, he gets Dutch to take his side, and yeah. you all draw your guns on each other, and then John walks back, and it's like, oh, no, it's happening. I know. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was sad. It was a great story. I, I think it really captivated me around chapter three. Oh, it was the chapter before we all went to that island 
Yeah, chapter four. Was yeah, yeah. Chapter yeah. five was Guarma. Was was yeah, the island. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. Chapter five was a very short chapter. Yeah, and, uh, actually no. What was the chapter when Jack got kidnapped? And then chapter three going into chapter four because chapter three yeah. it was the Braithwaite's that took him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you run, you guys all run into that the was, match. The, that was, that was like, such a good. He's like, get down here, you inbred trash. And it looks and, out and like, <laughs> yeah, like, just, I everybody's so different. just walking. If I was a guard him. who worked there, and I look over the manor so and I see eight gunslinger outlaws, dude. I would, I like, would be so I'd like, nervous. Yo, I quit. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I'd lay down my gun. And I'd walk straight out. That'd be scary. That'd be so terrifying. Good. So good. I, but, so uh, it, I'll say chapter three. Chapter three chapter is when three. I really got me into it. Yeah. I really like the moment where like you're in theater mode and like you're coming back from the island, running back to your camp, or like you're yeah. riding your horse back to your camp. That was very beautiful. So I think that there's a lot of cinematic potential. Yeah. For this. Because especially just the cinematic shots, especially that ending shot when Arthur oh, yeah. is, you know. He's laying on like. He's laying down. on the rock and the music starts to set in yeah. and the sun Looking is rising. The sun. Yeah. And then Such no, he idea. says to Dutch, he's like, I gave you all I had. I really did. And he's like, he's like I tried. And, you know, like Dutch realizes in that moment that he failed his kid. Yeah. He failed Arthur. But uh, one last yeah. thing I do want to say for one of my casting options as, you know, Dutch is, you know, the main villain. I would love to see Jeffrey Dean Morgan, the guy who plays Negan in The Walking mm, Dead. I can see it. That'd be perfect because he kind of looks like him, and we can see, obviously, he was the most brutal villain in The Walking yeah. Dead. He came in, he killed off two main characters right away, and he made Rick his lapdog for an entire season. Yeah. And uh, once we get to know more of his backstory, we know he can play that nice, you know, smart guy with a plan, mm -hmm. which Dutch was in the first couple of chapters, and yeah. then Churn Evil because we've seen him play a villain, and he can play a heck of a villain, man. Yeah, and you know, Dutch, he let the money get to him. He let yeah. the, like, the, like, he wanted that money, he let that get to him. He had a plan, but he did not have a plan. Tahiti. Yep. As Leonard Start was saying in the flash, he said, make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, and throw away the plan. Yeah. I live by that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible, man. It's just, it's just, now that I'm like, now that I'm just thinking about that game, I'm just thinking about the moment where it all went wrong when you're robbing, robbing the bank in San yep. Yeah, yeah. And then Hosea gets taken capture, and mm -hmm. no, yeah. Hosea dies, yeah. and then Lenny, and then some more characters. Yeah, and, and that's wow. when and that's that's when I knew I'm like wow I'm like this is like I'm like this is where I know the game's coming to that and I know there's yeah. only like one or two chapters left. Yeah, which was which was sad. Yeah, but you know if I'm I'm 100 down for it if if Jack Black ever gets it gets it uh greenlit. Yeah, you know he played good uh that I don't know, maybe a good Pearson or Bill. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, moving on to our next topic or little subtopic we have the last was prequel series pitched. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want from that? Curious to hear. I will say that in The Last of Us, we in the show they better explain a lot of things. They better explain how one Ellie is immune to the thing because they don't really go about. They don't really talk about it in the game at all. Like yeah. they kind of like they scratch well, they did, it. They did in the show. Did you not in the last episode? Uh, um, did you end up finishing it? No. <laughs> I know. I do know that they like touched upon it though. Yeah. Right? Didn't they touch upon it? Why? Yeah. yeah. I don't think they did that in the game. Yeah. Okay. In the last episode of the show, it, uh, a, a certain scene happens, mm -hmm. which does explain Ellie's immunity. Okay. And then uh, the producers and the creators of the show and game, yeah. they confirm that's how it happened. That's where she gets her immunity from. Okay. Yeah. So, so I do you, do you think that it could go along with the prequel like do you think that oh they'll show that this is how it happened like this is how it could have gotten to her possibly you know you know what i'm saying because like i mean prequel wise if they're gonna do a prequel it's really just before it happened yeah like before the because we played the game and the outbreak happened when yeah, we were playing yeah because it happened in the first like 30 minutes of the game yeah and it just fast forwards 20 years later that that's what i'm saying which is wild I, for me, for a prequel, I would love to see. I would love to see more of Joel and Tommy's backstory when they yeah. were together before they split off. Because in the game, in the show, we hear, uh, especially in the game, when you first find Tommy, when you're taking Ellie to mm -hmm. the Fireflies, you know, Joel's trying to give Tommy, like, I need you to take her off my hands. Like, I can't do this. And he was like, no, he's like, this has to be you. And then Joel's like, I saved you, like, early, like, earlier. And, like, in yeah, the yeah, years, yeah. Like, he's like, you owe me. He's like, I had nothing but nightmares from those years. We also get glimpses of, you know, him obviously from his past, from his brutality. Yep. 
So I want to see what were what were Tommy and Joel doing to survive, say, like, in year seven through, like, mm-hmm. year 12 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe they were raiders or raiders or human traffickers, like, you know, how they were. Mm-hmm. And how we saw other characters in the game, like, other, like, little NPCs. Yeah. So maybe they were like that at one point. And I would, I would like to see that. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the only thing I can think of, though, because obviously yeah. Ellie, you can't do nothing with that. She wasn't even born yet. So. Yeah, so, I mean, like, it's kind of just, like, you can do a prequel, but you you definitely want to be careful. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can do. And if, like you said, like, that's really good that you said that, like, a, in between what we didn't see, because, like I said, you can't do it. I mean, like, they the outbreak hasn't even started uh if they were to do a prequel like before the game even yeah. starts, so you know, you're. I will say you're. You, I agree with you on that. Yeah, I think know? the only way they can literally do a prequel is on the earlier years of infection, because uh, maybe we can focus more maybe like on different characters and different parts of like you know the United States or even the world in that fact. Because if in the game, if you're really paying attention, you're reading your articles and every like little piece of evidence you find. Certain parts of Canada are still functional. Yeah. Certain parts in, I think, Eastern Europe are still a little bit functional. And I think New Zealand is, like, was fully closed off. I It was touched by it, yeah. but it's still mainly functional. So there are still parts of the world that are still standing. So if it would go into that more and how the rest of the world was affected, other than just the states, mm-hmm. I would like to see that and Joel and Tommy's backstory. Yeah. That's the only way I think they could do a prequel. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I'm thinking, too. But, you know, that's just kind of our thoughts on, like, what we're <clears throat> what we're thinking for that. So for our second topic, we, as I'm sure many of you know, Five Nights at Freddy's has a movie coming, and it's been, it was announced that it was coming in October, and we got a screenshot to see like okay, like see what it was kind of about, but it's been announced that it will be in both theaters, as we all knew, but it will also be released on Peacock. Just how like you know some a lot of streaming services nowadays. Like especially H- or especially HBO. Well, actually, they don't do it anymore. HBO. They kind of only did during like quarantine. Yeah, during like quarantine. Suicide Squad and Suicide like, Squad. Nice Justice League. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Kong and Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that too. Oh, uh, that was actually not that bad of a movie. I oh, think. people hate on it. People yeah, do hate really? on it. Yeah, I, I liked it. I know. I I actually hear a good amount of him because I remember I went to go see it with uh, one of my friends when I was down in Florida. Yeah. We saw it like later in the night after we're you know, done doing our stuff. And he was like, Yeah, that was all right. And I'm like, it wasn't like you no know, horrible as you're making yeah. it out to be. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't I'm like bad. what else can you really expect from like, like insane lore and like great story? Like, yeah. you know, it's Kong and Godzilla throwing hands. Yeah, like, that's really what yeah. it is, you know. But um but yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's, it's it's so funny because I remember playing it as a kid. I Yeah. I, w- I was so I'm not scared. I play the game under my blankets at night. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. For a game where you stay in the same room and you open a couple of doors and check the lights, that had me shaking in my boots, man. Oh, I'm man. not gonna lie. It was mainly the fourth one that I was really scared because, like, you're running, you're like running, or running to the doors. Oh, if you yeah. open the door as yeah. soon as you turn on your flashlight, yeah, jump scare. Yeah, yeah here terrifying. for the breathing, and then you gotta close the door, and especially the animatronics and that. Yeah, those they were, were scary. scary. They were terrifying. Yeah, but uh, what mainly what everyone is obsessed with with Five Nights at Freddy is the backstory. Yeah, hundred percent. Even though I say like the first and second one, it kind of just looks like oh, like a little fun, like quick horror game. Yeah. The backstory to that is insane. I don't think we could talk about it. Is it's dark. It's dark. It's super, super dark. And especially for the movie, I'm happy they casted uh, Matthew. Matthew something. He plays. Yeah. He plays Shaggy in Scooby Doo, and, and he, he was, was also in, on screen. He was the bag. He was the bag. Yeah, in the first screen. time, him and uh, yeah. Billy Loomis. Yeah. Uh, I think he is a. He is a lesser known actor, that is for sure. Mm-hmm. But for the two acting roles I've seen him in, I've liked him. So I think he great, is great a, roles. a great fit for the perfect, uh, I mean, not for the per a great fit for the villain of the movie. And then we yeah. also have, what's his name? The guy who plays Pete in The Hunger Games. He's, he's in it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is he the son? Is it- I have no, let me search it up because I know cast of. I know that the. Story we probably can't necessarily go into because, like you said, it's pretty dark yeah. and like pretty gruesome. But like, there's like 
to get, but we can give kind of like a base just a little bit. Um, so like, basic. You, did you pull it up? Oh yeah, yeah. My bad. Oh no, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So Matthew uh, Lillard is the guy who plays Shaggy. He plays William Afton, yeah. who is the creator of you know, the uh, Freddy Fazbear's. Yeah. And uh, he is obviously the main villain too. And then Josh Hutcherson is Mike Schmidt. I think that's like his partner. Yeah, that's that's his partner. So those two kind of co-founded it uh, together. But no, William Afton is the one who. Yeah. You know, the purple guy. He went crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, to give a basis is a guy creates Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. It's like Chuck E. Cheese. Basically, it's basically what it is because you know Chucky's an animatronic, just as the three animatronics that are made, Freddy, Chica, and Bonnie. Some things happen, and... Some dark things happen. Some dark, dark things happen. Super dark things. Because of William Afton. Yeah. He ends up being the bad guy. He gets very corrupted, and he just he's just a terrible person. And yeah. at some point, they're going to do, like, the story with his son, where, like, his son stops him. They're probably going to do when William becomes Springtrap. They're gonna do a lot. I feel like we might see that in the first movie where he becomes Springtrap. Probably at the, the end, though. Yeah, the order is all out of whack. You gotta remember that. Too. Yeah. Because I think it goes Five Nights at Freddy's four was technically the first like one, and then it goes mm -hmm. three one then two. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Three one then two. Got yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. So he might become Springtrap at the end. I'd probably say yeah. like end credit maybe because I'm pretty sure they would want to make this like. I heard they might be franchise. doing a trilogy, yeah, like yeah. a franchise, yeah, which I would be down for, but all depends on the success of the first one. Cause they, I think it'll be very successful. I think it will, too, especially because I feel like they are executing it properly. Mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't seen much behind the scenes or, you know, interviews with them, yeah. but I don't know, I got, I got a gut feeling that they're going to do well on this. And it, I'm pretty sure it's this, that the directors, they did Black Phone, Invisible Man, they did Megan. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this was that. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, I watched all those, but I didn't watch. Uh, then watch Megan. It was alright. A lot of people I, like it, but I. It was I didn't, right. Yeah, I was never really interested. I'm like, I'm like, all right, it's kind of like not another Chucky, but like a girl version, I yeah. guess. It was only like PG-13. Like, how do you make a killer doll? With yeah. PG-13. I don't know. I a lot of people really did like it. I watched it when it came out on HD. I was like, eh, it's alright. Yeah, My boys and I watched that. That was alright, but. Invisible Man, first of all, was great. Great. And Black Phone was also good, especially Ethan Hawke. Very Hawk. good. Ethan, Ethan Hawke is just yeah. a great actor in general. And uh, which is funny, he does a lot of horror movies, but mm -hmm. he's mainly known for, you know, his non horror movies, so other than Sinister, which he was also great in. Yeah. But, you know, say uh, Training Day with Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. another great movie. I think that's. I don't know if that's what put him on the map. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it was something else, but he was great in that. So I love when I see him get a villain role. Yeah. 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 And I do think there's, like, a lot of hope for this. And I do think that what could come of this would be great because the lore is there. We yeah. have the template. I'm sure they're going to use it because the lore is incredible, you know? I think that it's great and i don't want it to be touched i, yeah. don't, I really don't because this is a movie where you could just copy straight from the game because mm -hmm. even people who played the game they don't know much of the lore because yeah. it's very hidden it's yeah. a very hidden lore within the game sure you might get a couple of cutscenes in the game where you know it kind of gives like a preview into something or like a look at what what happened yeah but other than that it's a very hidden story but a great one nonetheless yeah, yeah so you know i'm very very interested to see what can come about this. I think it'll be very cool and very interesting. But uh, is there any final thoughts you want to get on? Uh, I, I think I uh, got all my thoughts out for that. Perfect, perfect. So a little subtopic. We have a little side thing. Moana got an, uh, The Rock personally announced that Moana will be getting a live action. And a lot of you, I'm sure a lot of you know Moana is because Disney's very big with these movies. And I, I'm personally excited. I like Moana a lot. I, I genuinely love that movie and the rock's performance in it as maui he will be coming back as maui again which is really cool to me because i love the rock <laughs> and it's so cool that he that they're doing this i i didn't think they would do this yet because like you know they've been doing live action things they've been doing lady of the tramp most recently pinocchio aladdin lion king moana's down the line so i was not expecting that 
but I'm glad that they're doing this. Yeah. You know, because they do, they, I think they, they do They fine. do good when they do live yeah. actions, yeah. yeah. Uh, the only live action one I've watched was uh, The Lion King, because obviously yeah. I had to watch it. That's yeah. a classic. Grew up on that. I loved it. Uh, it was a great adaptation, because I'm pretty sure they kept everything the same. And pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. It was, it, was, it was the same story. Yeah. I know that. Uh, Moana, I have not seen. I have heard good things about it. But, uh, so, I, I mean, like like I said, like, I'm not hating on it. But, you know, it's something I can live without, if that makes sense. No, I get yeah. you. Yeah. Like I said, I just haven't seen Moana. So, yeah. yeah. I do like The Rock, though. The Rock yeah. is a dope guy. You should check out the live-action Aladdin. That one was, I, I like that know, more I than the original. They made one. Oh, yeah, with Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I have heard about that. I like. I, I like that one more than original. Personally, I, I love Will Smith's performance in it, and like I know there's that whole controversy with like the slap thing, but you know. Keep yeah. my wife's name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that with that, I mean, you know, because like a lot of actors and actresses had done worse and had gotten. Oh yeah, punishment. easily. So, Expect just. Uh, sure, he shouldn't have done it, but like Robert Downey Jr. for example, that yeah, man in the nineties was, was like, a, crazy stuff. He was an animal. Yeah. He was a complete animal and, and he put himself he, back at the top as yeah. Rob, uh, as Rob, not Robert De Niro I don't know why as, <laughs> as Tony Stark yeah. yeah but you know I think like I, you know I think he's getting back he's getting back some roles um, yeah. I'm pretty sure he'll be back for Aladdin too but I, I still love Will Smith and his performance in it I, but cause you know sometimes you gotta separate the art from the artist you know? yeah but I'm really interested in this Moana live action I think it'll be very Interesting. Very cool. Yeah. Like I said, I, I like when Disney does live action. I do they, they don't do bad. They don't, they don't do, do bad. Because Disney already has basically a built-in audience. Yeah. Because people love seeing live action, even like action within a live action mm -hmm. from a cartoon. Like, oh, that's a cool adaptation from yeah. it. Like, you know, of course they're going to go see it. Like, yeah. no matter what, they are they are going to make money off it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did hear that new Pinocchio one was kind of bad, though. I didn't even hear it. Isn't that with Tom Hanks or something? Yeah. Yeah. He was the yeah. Beatle or... or I forgot what that thing was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Mr. It was like it was like Jiminy Cricket, right? I think. I don't know. I, 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 I really, all I know is Tom Hanks is it. That's that's literally all I know. Pretty sure he was Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because like Disney's made a lot of stuff. So like Pinocchio, Lady of the Tramp, Mulan. I didn't watch Mulan. Aladdin, Lion King, Dumbo. Is that the, the elephant's name? Dumbo. Yeah. 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 Dumbo. Dum Dumbo the elephant. Yep. Yeah. I think I think that one was with uh, Brian Cranston. I think so. Yeah, but yeah, I mean that's kind of just our thoughts on it a little bit because I think that's very cool. So yeah, moving on uh, for topic three, we have Disney licensing out, uh, Disney Disney licensing out content to other streaming services, which is basically like giving them rights to certain movies or certain characters that other companies can use. Kind of like how Sony does with Spider Man with yeah, Marvel. Yeah. Because technically Sony does own Spider Man. That's why they can make the games. Mm -hmm. But Marvel does they got, still a, they got a good they, they got something going on right yeah. now. You know? And cause like they it's very smart that they're doing this because they're not doing anything with it. Cause like they they have Fox, so they have Predator. Yeah. They aren't gonna do anything with Predator at Assumingly so. And they still make money off it without having to do any of the work. Yeah, so basically. they're going to license it off to some other places that will do these things. That will these, these studios will make these movies because they've acquired a lot of companies, as we know, and like uh, those companies have the rights to a lot of characters, especially iconic characters. Like I said, Predator, very iconic characters. And if they're licensing them off because they know they're not going to do anything with it, they one will they'll get more money. Two will be able to get more of these movies because I'm pretty sure that's why. Well, we did we technically got a Predator movie. Predator. Yeah, that, I actually like. I like that a lot. Actually, I like, I, I like how it's set like back like in uh. It was. I don't even know what year, but it was when like you know Native Americans yeah, were yeah. still uh, living on their land back like. I think on the East Coast, -ish. Yeah. it was still towards the East Coast. Yeah, and how they saw the alien predator ship come down, drop him off, and then it was just go mode from yeah. there. Yeah, the pacing yeah. was good. They pacing got, was they great. They basically yeah. got right into it, and it, I, I think it was very interesting. But I think Disney is making the right call here, you know, because if first of all they want to make more money, they should have been done this. Yeah, I don't know why they they waited to do now, but they're still doing it regardless. They shouldn't have waited, I would say. But 
you know, this is a good thing. We'll be getting more movies that we lo- like from characters that we love. Hopefully we'll get, hopefully they're good studios that acquire them because that's very important. Yeah. You know, because I don't want them to mess it up because sometimes, because like, I won't, I won't take remakes, but like continuations of like long standing movies kind of. If It's like, kind of like with uh, Michael Myers. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. No, I get exactly oh, what you're man. saying. Yeah, no, I, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. You, it really has to be the right studio gets the right character. Yeah. Yeah. Because 28, I, I loved 2018 Halloween. That was a good one. Yeah, that was it. And then there was Halloween Kills. It, and the Halloween I Ends. Like I didn't watch those two at all. I watched, I watched Halloween the Kills. first 10 minutes of Halloween Kills. I'm like, oh, wow, like, he's going to all these firefighters. I'm like, cool. And I just never touched it again. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that it's. Actually, that's a great example. Halloween. First of all, Halloween Kills was not. It was boring, in my opinion. And like at the end, when everybody had like lethal or blunt weapons, and they were like all like hitting them. Like They're some had chainsaws, yeah, yeah, yeah. some had bats, and all this. The chainsaws was the biggest thing. Personally, I would not stop until that guy was. Not I don't even know because it's like because like here's the thing. He's bro. in smithereens. I'm I not know. stopping until like I see his heart. That's something. what I'm saying. Like the crazy part is he got up. Yeah. And he took them all down, down. Like all of them. He's not human, man. He's not. He's not human. There's no way he's <laughs> That's human. the issue, you know? Like, what? Because how he started was just a normal human being. It was yeah. crazy, you know? And that's how a lot of these things start. But then, like, that continuation, next thing you know, they're supernatural. Yeah. And in the, in the third movie, he was getting put down by a kid our age. Yeah. Some scrawny little kid our age. Yeah. I, if that's true... I would love to go toe to toe with Michael Myers. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> like, what I'm saying. If he can take him, why can't I? Right, because he yeah. he well, he was human, and yeah. now. But a four year old, a couple of four year olds with chainsaws, baseball bats, and hammers, they can't take him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm you know? I'm calling on that. There's no way. Yeah, and like it's because like the thing because I don't know. It, I, I feel some type of way about it because like you know it's like I said he was human. Now it's like. Oh, that devil got to him. I'm just yeah. like, Ooh, okay, on, cool. Like, why just to turn it supernatural? That takes away from the element. Yeah, personally, because that that just seems like a cop out. Yeah. And then what? When how did they end it? I, I don't even remember. I don't even know. I know he dies. In, I know he dies in the third one. I I didn't dies. watch. I didn't yeah. watch Halloween ends. That's nor did I. Nor did I. all I know is that he just dies. Yeah, in the second one. I didn't even yeah. bother watching Halloween ends. I don't think I will. <laughs> Ever. Yeah. It was a it was a mistake watching Halloween Kills. It was a very boring movie. Uh, the only like kind of slash movie like that I've ever really been into. I've never been into like you know like Freddy Krueger, Jason, Michael mm. Myers. I really only like Scream. That's that's it. That's foul. Even though Scream's always the same thing over and mm-hmm. over again, but like I, I, it gets repetitive after a while. But I don't know. I still I still find myself watching them. I want to watch the new one. I didn't like the one before. Scream Five. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, yeah that one was alright. I didn't like the killers in that. Yeah. That's fair. I didn't like how they did my boy Huey from the boys. I know. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't I like how they know. did him. I was like, oh cool, I'm like Huey's in here. That's like, what I was thinking. I'm like, oh my god, I'm like Huey's the killer. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yeah. but uh, yeah, I didn't watch the new one in New York. I heard it wasn't that good though. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I've Actually, I kinda, I, I've kind of I've kind of heard mixed things. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I heard it was good. I heard it wasn't good too at the same time. Mm-hmm. So. I gotta check it out for myself to see. I gotta wait till they add to like you no know, Netflix, HBO Max, Prime, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll they'll when they put it out, I'm gonna watch it. Uh, yeah. uh, when they put it on HD, it's still in theaters, but I don't think I'm gonna see it in theaters at this point. I would like to see Mario still though. I haven't checked that one out. I'm, I'm trying to see that this week. Mm-hmm. I'm since uh, we don't have school or I don't have school Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Good luck on the SAT, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, but I think Disney Disney is making the right choice. That's kind of just like my thoughts on it. You got any final thoughts about that? Uh, no, no. I think I think I'm good there. All right. Yeah. But yeah, I think they make the right choice. Now, subtopic three. I know you said you don't know too much yeah, about. Yeah, I can't, I, just, I tried so hard with Game of Thrones. I just can't get into it. That's okay. It's good though. It's good though. Yeah. I, I will say that. Yeah. That's okay. I got you, bro. I got you. Yeah. So basically, Game of Thrones is a very popular series, very popular book series as well. You got more attention from the show, obviously. I what I will say about Game of Thrones is, and I don't typically throw this around. I do think, but I do think Game of Thrones is one of the best shows 
of all time. One oh, of yeah. Those. You're not the only one to say that. A lot of people do. Even uh, my brothers, my dad, who's watched it, they mm -hmm. say it's up there with you know, shows like Sopranos, Breaking yeah. Bad. Yeah. It's for sure in a lot of people's top three, if not their number one show. I think it's an S-tier movie. I mean, yeah. or a show. I think it's a very S-tier show. And House of the Dragon, their spinoff, I think was very, very good. Very good, actually. Short and sweet. I think 12 episodes because that's what streaming services are doing now. They're just keeping it like certain about these type of like shortened episodes, like number wise to kind of keep attention. Yeah. On Which it. is actually like more episodes than other shows. Cause each show, when the new season drops, like stranger things, for example, mm -hmm. they only get like, you know, 10 episodes in a season or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm glad that they do it out weekly. Cause they didn't do like with like with stranger things. They didn't do that. They just put it all yeah. out and then you binge it. You have the hype for a couple of weeks and then that's it. But yeah. you know, shows when you release it weekly, you can build up more hype. You can build up suspense. So you keep, you keep them onto it, you know? Yeah. And I think house of the dragon was a great show. And if you have seen game of Thrones, you have heard the name thrown around Aegon the conqueror. Yeah. Aegon the Conqueror, it's a bad guy. You know, he's a he's a conqueror. He's conquered six countries. I'm pretty sure they said in the books, and he was a, he was ruthless. I'm pretty sure. Was he in the show? No. No. Oh, no. so it's kind of like a. This is a pre. This is a prequel type situation. Okay. All right. Like before House of the Dragon as well, because House of the Dragon was a prequel to Game of Thrones. Is it like a hundred years before Game of Thrones? House of the Dragons. I know it's something. Yeah, like that. something like yeah. that. Something like that. And. This will be really cool. I'm geeked about it. I do love Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. It's a very well-made show, or they're well-made shows. I'd be very interested to see how Aegon the Conqueror came to be Aegon the Conqueror. Yeah. I don't remember. Isn't he? Do you know if he's, like, the Mad King? I forgot what I forgot if he was the Mad King or not, you know? No? All I know is Jon Snow. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All I know is Jon Snow. He has a couple of dire wolves, and then I know that season eight, according to a lot of people was not the best season it wasn't the best season but yeah. i think it's over i think it's overhated personal yeah it, it was like i could see how they say it's rushed because it was only like eight to eight episodes yeah it was eight episodes usually i'm pretty sure they're 12 episodes a season it was okay i don't think i think the ending was fine i actually didn't mind the ending and i think the season was what was right. it a good ending yeah it was All a right. good ending yeah for the for the whole snow family All you right. know? yeah um I think it was a really good ending. I mean, what more could you ask, to be honest? Yeah. 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 And then, because they're making the, they're, like, it's just talks um, about having Aegon in a, a, a prequel, but there's also been talks of Jon Snow getting his own show after the events of Game of Thrones, which I'm very interested because I love James, or not James, I was about to say James Gunn, uh, Jon Snow. Yeah. I love his character. Uh Tyrion, uh, Tyrion is my favorite character, the little dwarf guy. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, Peter Dinklage. Yep. yep yeah, yep, yeah, I've seen some scenes with him. I, uh, yeah. like, another scene I remember is where he stops King Joffrey. Mm -hmm. He was like, he basically, he kind of made him, no, his lapdog real yeah. quick. No, he was doing something. Yeah. He's like, all right, he's like, he's like, cut it. No yeah. more. I was like, yes. I mean, that's his uncle. Like, so, yes, I mean, Peter Dinklage, that, that's him. his uncle. That's yeah. so, I mean, yeah. he's And just... he was like, because uh, he has that bodyguard who follows him around. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. And then he was like, he's like, all right, he's like, if he touches me, he's like, he's like, just kill him. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, I love that I'm like, moment. this guy, uh, he's him. He's one of, yeah. I think Game of Thrones has really well-written characters, and Tyrion is one of the best-written characters. Yeah. I love that scene where, like, he walks in, and he was like, what are you doing, man? Yeah. Like, he was like, he's like, like get, get a grip, grip on yourself. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, this and is then, supposed to be your queen. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, you're you're threatening the king. He's like, no, I'm threatening my nephew. <laughs> or, no, he yeah. said, I'm educating my nephew, which I like that line a lot. Yeah. He's had a lot of really good moments, and I think the he way he turned on him, like, oh, what are you doing? Threatening the king? No, bro, I'm talking to my nephew. It's right. Family matter. Stick, mind your own business, or my boy here will chop you down. Right. I <laughs> said, he said, he said, he said, Sir Cranston. If he says another word to me, just kill him. I was like, it was, I was like, he oh, looked sorry. over at him like, the guy looked over at him like, hmm? Are you serious? What? <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't, right? I love that moment. I love yeah. that moment so much. And I, I, you can do so much with like this world yeah. of Game of Thrones, kings, queens, all so that. That's not a show with built-in audience. People yeah. who just watch Game of Thrones in oh, general, yeah. they're yeah. going to love it. 
and pe- people were very wary about uh house of dragon but it was house of dragon it was successful people were watching very it. yeah successful. i know uh right when it came out my brothers all came home and they watched it with my dad right yeah. away and I'm like, you should sit down and watch with us i was like no <laughs> I mean, like, the good thing is you don't need to watch Game of Thrones to watch House of the yeah, Dragon. Yeah, I know that. I don't know. I just, I've tried so hard with Game of Thrones. I've maybe done this on two, three separate occasions where I watched the first couple episodes, and I just never touched it again. It's not. It's a good show. That's the thing. Like, I don't know. I can't feel myself getting pulled. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one last time. You should. I, cause I know. It gets very slow. You know, but then which I usually it. never mind. I yeah. never actually. I didn't think that show was slow when I was watching. You think so? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought I picked up. There's certain shows where I have watched it and I thought it was slow, and I've recommended it to my friends. Mm-hmm. They watch it. Like, what are you talking about? So this thing picks up right away. Yeah. I'm like, I guess that's just me. That's fair. And I will say, you should give House of the Dragon a try because it does. It they kind of do get right into it. But yeah, you know, that's just kind of like my thoughts on on that little topic. But uh, about to, I think that's it. Yeah. You know, that's all of our topics. We got all our subtopics out. Oh. Well, uh, so I guess end of uh, episode four. Nova, uh, thank you for listening. I'm your host, Matya. This is Caden, and we will see you in episode five. Yep, enjoy SAT. Yep, good luck. <laughs>